Hi. In this short demo, I'll show you how you can start creating some objects that you can use in your 3D map in MapInfo Pro version 2023. So in this example, I'm going to use an airport and you can see I've drawn some runways here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create some zones around those uh, uh, runways here. So to do so, I'm going to create a copy of this tape. Just right click here and say copy as. You can see I have it here now. Let's just quickly just change the display here. So and then drag the runway on top here. So the next thing I want to do is actually combine these. So the zones I want to create, they should actually be buffers around all the runways. So let's select all our runways here. Make this layer editable and now go to spatial, combine selected objects. Let's just, just make that one blank actually. So now we've got one Object. Let's just save this one here. So now our our zones runways here. That's just one polyline. That is multiple segments, right? But we want to create like five zones. So instead of having just one, I'm just gonna copy and paste this one. Right? So Control C, and then I'm gonna paste it four times. One, two, three, four. And if I now browse my table here. And let's just make it this. So now I can see I have my five copies here. Let's save this one. Now I need to have two extra columns here so I can add my, my width and my elevation to those zones as well. So let's just double click our table here to go to the table structure. Now I can add a new field. Let's call this one buffer and make that, just make it an integer. Add another field, and this one I'm going to call elevation, and this needs to be float. Okay, and let's just bring in our table again here, and let also let's also browse this one actually. Just going to make a couple of different distances here. So from four to six thousand meters, and the elevation similarly. Some of these values, they actually come from information about drones in flight zones around airports. Right? So now I've got my my object here created with a buffer and elevation. Right? Just save the changes. And the next thing I want to do is I want to create a copy of this table based on this one. And that one I need to be able to work with uh, elevation data in, so I need to, to support MNC values. And I need to ensure that it actually supports M and C. Save. All right. Okay. So now I've got my new zone here. And now I need to create buffers around my line. To do so, I'm going to use my SQL window. And I'm going to use a update statement here. The table I'm going to update is zones M, C. I'm going to update my object. I'm going to make that equal to just take a buffer function here. And it takes an object, takes a, a resolution, which is the number of points in a circle. Uh, and then it takes a, a size. In this case, it's gonna be the buffer column. And finally, a unit. In this case, it's meters, right? So now I create buffers around my lines, but I wanna keep them as polylines actually in my 3D window. So I'm just gonna change this again. Convert, convert to P-line. So this way I can force that polygon that I created here using the buffer into a polyline object instead. I don't want to browse the result, so let's just run this. And now you can see you've got some lines drawn out here. Right? These are actually polylines. Let's zoom out a bit. So you can see I created them out here from four to six kilometers away from the runways. Let's save our changes again. So the next thing we want to do is we want to actually update the nodes on these lines with the elevation. To do so, I'm going to use a, a tool 
from the marketplace. In case you haven't already downloaded this tool, I'm just gonna show you. It's the draw tools. So it has some capabilities here for updating M and C values and notes, and, and that's that feature I wanna do here. If you haven't already, click the install product to get it installed and ready to use. I already, already have it installed, so I just need to run it. I'm just gonna double click it, and now it's running. You see it's running here. So to use it, I make my layer editable, and then I select all my objects here. And now I go to my spatial tab, notes drop down, and from here you can use the update set M values. In this case, I'm gonna check the update C values with a specific value, but not a hard coded one. I wanna read it from a column in this case, the elevation column, and then I'm gonna set it to that value, right? And now the values have been assigned. I can check that by actually, you can see it's showing my cursor position. And you can also see that that um, snap is enabled. So when I hover over these notes, you can see the coordinate down there in the corner, 28.75, right. Now, if I only show these small values here at this kilometer scale, it's actually hard to see that there's any height associated to those, those polarized. So to, to make them stand out a bit more, I'm gonna multiply the values by a, a value. So I'm gonna use the update again here. I'm gonna update my set values. I'm gonna specify this time 10, and then I'm gonna specify I wanna multiply the existing values by 10. And now if I hover over the position here, you can see that it now says 200 instead of 20. Let's save my changes. Now created my data. Let's try to see that in a 3D map. I'm gonna go to the 3D option here, new 3D map. I'm gonna pick my map then terrarium and my precisely bronze tile server as the surface. I'm gonna add some additional layers here. And here I'm gonna pick my zones and the runways as well. And now you can see it's rendering my 3D map. If I zoom in a bit and start rotating, you can see that these polylines, they are actually at different heights. That's one way to actually create objects you can show in your 3D map in MapInfo Pro version 2023.